see Nola, but she was sleeping. So I thought I'd stop by and see you. I'm glad you did. Listen, come on in. I'll buy a drink over the bar, okay? Thank you very much. Mr. McCall, what a nice surprise. I can't tell you how delighted I am. <laughs> Master, I just wanted to thank you for letting me take off tonight. Oh, no, you should actually thank Tony. Oh, uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, good night, Mr. McCord. Good night. Appreciate it. Listen, I want to thank you for what you did for Nola today. And giving up that custody suit was the best medicine in the world for her. Well, as long as Nola's happy. And I know Kelly Louise is in good hands as long as she's with Nola. I can assure you that Kelly Louise will be well provided for once she and her mother move out to Thornway Road. Thanks. You're Take welcome. Good night. good night. Bye. Mr. McCord, it was just wonderful that you could come tonight. I've been wanting to ask you to a party I'm going to be having in a couple of weeks for an old friend of mine. And I want you, well, and Nola, too, if she can make it to come. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Chamberlain, but you see... I'm, I'm sorry I'm not going to take no for an answer. I've been talking about you a great deal to my friend, and she's very eager to meet you. Her name is Blanche Bouvier. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Now, Mr. McCord, it seems to me entirely possible that you might have met both Blanche Bouvier and Trish and forgotten it. I doubt it. Oh, Mr. McCord, don't be ridiculous. You and I are both very active, very social people, and we cannot be expected to remember everyone we meet. I know, I don't. Somehow I find that hard to believe. Oh, really? You know what I find hard to believe? That Blanche would have met you and forgotten you. You're exactly her type. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, you are. She adores a strong silent. Of course, most women do. I speak for myself. Oh. Yes. You've met Mark, haven't you? We've met. Well, perhaps you don't realize how secretive that man is. Now, he and I were together for months, and I could never once get him to talk to me about his past. Well, not that I tried very hard. But anyway, I am drawn to the strong side of life, so you must come to my party. Where did this one come from? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Bauer. Oh, good to see you. Hi, good to see you. I wonder what he's doing here. Well, this place is just filled with unusual types tonight, don't you think? I uh, really wouldn't know. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, what were you saying? Well, just that I wanted to know if during the time that you spent with McCord, he mentioned anything to you about uh, living in Europe or about what he was doing before he came to Springfield. No, he never talked about himself at all. He talked about Nola. He talked about getting Nola away from Crocker and Loomis. And the only thing I ever heard about Europe was one time Nola said that he lived there. What did she say exactly? Not much. She said it had something to do with his being an archaeologist. But he never mentioned anything about, about why he moved around so much or why he moved to Springfield. No. If Mr. McCord's a private guy and that works for him, I think it's great. I don't see why I should go ask him a bunch of questions. No, I, I didn't uh, mean that you should. But during the time that you were looking for Noah, did it seem a little strange to you that he didn't want to bring in the authorities? No. Well, did he tell you why he didn't want to bring in the authorities? I know that uh, you and Lieutenant Wyatt talked to Mr. McCord today for a couple hours. You must have asked him that question. Yeah, we did. Well, what did he say? Very little. Actually, he was so nervous that he couldn't even hold a cup of coffee. His hand was shaking so well. The guy strung out. He'd been up for days when you talked to him. Yeah, you know, I, I realize that, but... Uh, doesn't... Doesn't his, his fear of the police seem a little bit overblown to you? In this case, no, it doesn't. Why? Because we were dealing with killers here. Real life killers. Those guys thought for a minute the cops were gonna come on board that freighter and start shooting, they would have killed Nola like that. No questions. They could have anyway. But they didn't. You gotta remember that. Now if that's why you're on Mr. McCord's case, forget it. Because if it wasn't for him, my sister wouldn't be alive now. No, I realize it. But uh, our uh, questioning of McCord actually goes uh, way beyond just your, uh, your sister's kidnapping. 
And uh, the fact of the matter is that when we discuss anything with McCord or his housekeeper, they both seem to be reluctant to answer questions about anything. Well, maybe they feel like they don't have to. I... Um... Look, you want answers? Talk to Helena Mancini. She knew Mr. McCord when he lived in Europe. Yeah, I'd be careful when I was talking to her, though, because uh, she's the one that whacked him in the head with a crowbar. Yeah, I know. McCord mentioned that. Uh, and according to her, she wasn't really trying to kill him. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know how many other things you could you could be meaning when you hit someone in the head with 10 pounds of cast iron. <laughs> well, I happen to agree with that. But uh, McCord keeps her living in her house, at his house, so apparently he knows something you and I don't. I guess. Well, I know he doesn't trust her anyway. I mean, for a while, he even thought that she was in on the whole thing with Crocker and Loomis. Well, apparently, he doesn't think that now. No, I guess he's finally convinced himself that she just wanted the cradle, even though it was going to cost my sister her life. Yeah, interesting. Well, Tony, thank you very much. Talk to you. Uh, Mr. Bauer, look, I know Mr. McCord's a strange guy. He didn't like to talk and everything, but don't forget, he saved my sister's life. I'm never going to forget that. No, I understand. Is something wrong? I hope not. The car that Crocker and Loomis were driving was found near the Canadian border. So the Canadian authorities are going to help us find them, but uh, the outcome is going to be the whole, gonna, the whole thing's going to take a lot longer than we anticipate. As long as they find us two and they get what's coming to them, I don't care if it takes a year. Well, I don't feel that way because I think Crocker and Loomis can answer some questions about the elusive Mr. McCord. Yeah, maybe, but I doubt it. Well, Tony, thank you very much for your help. Yeah, well, I'm glad I could help. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, it's good to see you. I'll talk to you. Take care. Their yacht wasn't as grand as the Christina, but it was uh, very... Excuse me for a minute. Thank you. Anthony. Hi, Mr. McCoy. What did uh, Mike Bauer want? He wanted to check on some of the questions that the, he and Lieutenant Wyatt asked you down about Crocker and Loomis. Uh, they found the car. Oh, where? Up near the Canadian border, so they're going to have to call the Canadian cops in on it. I see. Is that all he talked about? No, he was asking a lot of questions about your past. What does my past have to do with Nola's kidnap? I don't know. Well, what did you tell him? What did I tell him? I don't know a thing. True. Mr. McCord, he's after something. I don't know what it is, and I don't want to know. But if you were in some trouble before you came to Springfield, I don't want Nola getting mixed up in the middle of it. You know what I mean? I understand that. Look, I know it's past visiting hours, but perhaps the uh, nurse at the desk will allow me to look in on Nola and see how she's doing. If you see you tell her I said hello. I shall. But I better say good night to my hostess. Excuse me. Thank you so much for the drinks, Miss Chamberlain. Oh, you're not leaving already, are you? I'm sorry, I really must. Uh, oh, please excuse me. I have to get Mr. Bartender is in here. I'll be with you in just a minute. Hello, hard for sound. <laughs> 